Hey everybody, welcome back to the eBay shop. My name's Corey. I'm Teresa. And we are Grams and Pops Vintage. Today we're gonna take some of our very limited knowledge and share some of the secrets we've learned that should, we hope, help you guys actually make more money in your reselling journey and has definitely started helping us make more money in ours. But like usual, we do have to get some orders pulled today because we've got to get our weekend orders out the door into the post office. So we're going to pull some orders first and then we'll start talking about the topics as we go. And what sold first? We sold the Bratz. We sold Slumber Party Yasmin. All right, so that's that one. So we've got a little brat stall with no clothes and no feet. She naked and footless. And she sold for what? $16.49. All right, what do we get next? From the bin store, we sold our drone landing pad. Got that weird thing there. And that is exactly as advertised. It's a little landing pad you stake down in the yard for your drone to land on. Yep, but we don't have the stakes. I'm not sure why you would need that. I suppose if you just want to play helicopter pilot. I don't know. But we did pick that up at a bin store, so we paid a buck for it. Yep. And that sold for how much? $14. We sold something that we've gotten a lot of questions on. We sold a Sneaky Pete bodyguard holster. It would be that one there. Why is it called a Sneaky Pete? It's just the brand. Oh. I so, thought maybe it was like because they hide it somewhere. Well, it is a flat holster for concealed carry. And that's what they make. But that's the brand is Sneaky Pete. It's a small holster. One thing with holsters, if you're going to list them, know what gun goes, know what gun know what gun goes in the holster know what weapon what ones fit in it what ones don't like go to the manufacturer website get as much information as you can because that is going to be the most common question you get is will this xyz fit in that and we just tell them to go back to the website i've been pointing people back to the manufacturer website to look that up and basically been telling people go google it stop being Ooh. stop being that guy that's asking questions you can answer yourself, but with Google, that's not very good customer service. I probably shouldn't tell people that, but all oh, that drives me crazy when people ask dumb ass questions. Yes. <laughs> Again, not good customer service. We should have put that information on there. I should have answered the questions. They just got me on a day where it was a little too warm outside of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a small holster. And after a lot of back and forth with different people that sold for how much? 54 bucks, full holster. asking price. Yeah. So holsters are good pickups. And that puts us at our first secret to share with you guys. And I don't know if it's a secret. And I certainly didn't make this one up or stumble on it by ourselves. We kind of, we kind learned of learned it. this through the YouTubers, other YouTube resellers. I think the first one we saw doing it, and I know others have done it, so I'm not trying to take credit from anyone. But I think the first person we saw do it was, or talking about it, was Chris and Caleb on Two Old Guys Reselling Podcast. They were talking about doing how they ship their golf clubs. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the consensus was they were using a flat rate. And I think they even mentioned they were doing like 9.99 flat rate for their golf clubs, yep. which we looked into. I thought, holy cow, that's not a good idea. Like that's bad no, because the shipping I was seeing on them when we were selling them or when we go look online, a lot of the shipping rates were 30, 40 bucks. But in all the golf clubs we've shipped so far, Mm -hmm. We have only, most of them have been under that, have been under that price. And I think there's only been one that was over that price. Yep. So we actually, we actually did measure the box and take some average weights and look at shipping rates to different parts of the country. And $9.99 for a golf club is a decent flat rate. And like, the, you're going to make money on most of them. You'll lose a little bit on a few of them. But the best piece is we're in the middle of the country. So. Right. Fly, yep. wings, fly. Being right here in South Dakota, it's a shorter distance for us to both coasts. So it actually gives us a pretty good advantage setting that to the flat rate because mm -hmm. the people using calculated are, we're just creaming them now. They're not even coming close to our shipping rates. Nope. Blow molds is another one. <laughs> blow molds is huge. When you, you go look at the blow molds out there and depending on where you are in the country and where that blow mold is, a lot of the shipping rates are getting north of a hundred bucks. The, one, the most recent one that we did before we learned this was a ghost candle. Was thing. a ghost uh, melting candle. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was a melting oh, it looked candle. Like a ghost it candle. had <laughs> eyes on it, but it did have eyes on it. But it was like a melting yeah, candle. Yeah, so it was a Halloween one, but it was about three foot tall and it was wide at the base. Yep. 
and that they they actually paid 107 90 bucks was it oh, i thought ship. it was 107 between 90 and 100 bucks to ship it so yep. and they don't they don't weigh anything so nope. they are big but blow molds don't weigh anything and they don't cost that like calculated shipping on ebay is so far off when it comes on to blow one. molds that, that it's not even funny like it's not even remotely close it's and, over double yep and that was ups shipping i mean you can't i don't think you can ship the blow molds usps because of the you size probably, of them you probably could but then you get both the the surcharges which puts yep. it up it'd be well over 100 bucks then but so we decided to do flat rate even the taller christmas santa blow molds and like this guy here you know when they start getting really big and tall, you know, big around and tall like that, that cubic, you're paying for cubic shipping then. So it's the full size of the box, not just the weight of it. But even those ones, you're gonna ship UPS from where we're at in the middle of the country to just about anywhere for under 40 bucks. 40, 40 45 bucks. Yep. And I think we set our flat rate at what? 45, 40 or 45, I don't yeah. remember for sure. So we're right in there. And I know that we're probably gonna eat five, 10 bucks here, there, and then we're gonna make five, 10 bucks here and there. It's gonna even out. So many resellers buy blow molds because they see it on YouTube constantly. And then they sit on them because they set calculated shipping and nobody's wanting to pay $100 in shipping. But now I'm excited because now we'll sell more of them and I get to watch Corey exercise. Hey, if you've never packed a blow mold. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to record it one of these times. <laughs> but I have to bleep out the cuss words because he does let a few of those slip while he's doing it. I'm trying to think of what I could even compare it to. There's really not a comparison. By the time you're done packing Yoga. a blow mold, if, <laughs> there's an easy way to do this. You go to Walmart and you buy the medium sized boxes and you stack three of them together and you can pack any blow mold there is. But we don't live next to a Walmart. It's like a 45 minute drive to a Walmart. And we always forget about it by the time we get to the towns. We are not prepared for packing blow molds. So what I had to do was take our VCR boxes, which are- 20 by 14 by six. That size. And I have to put two or three together the long way. And then I have to do that twice so that I have a cap for that. So I'm using six boxes to Frankenstein one blow mold. And by the time I get done, the box looks a little janky, but it's solid. Hey. And I look like a soaking wet drowned rat that's way too chubby to be on the ground packing six boxes into one. Tomorrow we're going to Lowe's. So we can buy some Lowe's boxes. We might have to buy some. Yeah. Moral of this story, the secret of this story is flat rate shipping, but also buy some boxes so that packing is not a complete pain in the butt. And we did that for the golf clubs. We got the big, tall, skinny yep. boxes, but we suck at the other ones. And if you, I mean, if you really want to, if you really want to get right down to the profit margin on these, include the price of the box. If you know a tall bull mold takes three boxes, include that into your flat rate fee. Yep. If you know it's going to cost you roughly 40 bucks to ship it and six dollars worth of packing supplies your Let's flat rate should be 46 45 whatever yep. we we have been selling golf clubs pretty regularly mm -hmm. and without that flat rate our golf clubs would have been 40 50 dollars shipping on some of them calculated because it's the 9.99 we're selling pretty regularly yep. and being in the middle of the country does help but it doesn't help that much i mean still the flat rate is what's getting it yep. so that's a that's a big one. That has been a big one as far as our sales go, and that definitely makes more sales. Wouldn't yep. you say? Now he just needs to get on his butt, get off his butt, get on my butt, get off his butt, and clean them and list the rest of the golf clubs that we have. You ever cleaned a golf club? I did them for you before. Well, I've done plenty too, but it sucks. I hate it. It's, he doesn't do anything that requires cleaning. It's dish soap and scrubbing, and then. The magic, magic eraser. eraser if you can't get it. Like golf club, people take golf clubs to go beat the shit out of grass with them. So they get dirty and they're hard I to clean. I think we should do that on Thursday. You want to go golfing? I think I do. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's talk about some other stuff I sold. All right, what else did you sell? I sold some Littlest Pet Shop. Three of them to one person. We sold a mini fox, a poodle, and a panther. So we got all three of them here. Okay, so we got this little guy here. Which one is that? The poodle? That it? Is that a poodle? Yeah, that's a poodle. Yep, he sold for $3.99. We got this fox. Does it say mini fox? Oh, you know what? Hold on. Shitter. That did you get the wrong bad. one? I did. Okay. Shit. Then I'm going to break off the snowman. This. Wow. 
Oh, it says it's a mini one. Oh, there he is right there. Got it. Sorry. I'm going to break the snowman's nose off. Okay, so we got the much smaller miniature fox. Yep. Slightly purple fox. And she sold for $2.99. And we got the bigger panther. And it sold for $3.99. So eight, 11 bucks total roughly. Yep. So those three are going out. On a positive note, that's the third time this customer has ordered from us. That was Her all daughter. positive notes. No, I know, but on another positive note, <laughs> this is the third time this lady's ordered from us. Her daughter loves the ones they get from us. We love repeat buyers. Yeah. You know, and I don't think we'd get them if we didn't put our stickers in our boxes, do you? I don't know. I don't think they'd know where they got them from. I think they'd just know that it was eBay. Yep. Because nobody knows and your And then they store. get the sticker and then they go in and they like our store. I don't know. Have you ever checked to see how many people like our store or follow our store? I don't think I have. People could follow your store? Yeah, they can favorite your store. Live and learn. I don't know how. Oh, there it is. We have 228 followers. Yay. Yay. That's awesome. That's, that's good. And we've sold, we have now officially sold over 2,000 items. How about that? Oh, speaking of the store, how many items... How many items do we actually have on the store now? 2,000, this is a weird number, 2,222 items. Seriously? <laughs> yes, see? <laughs> 2,222 items and we've sold over 2,000 and we have 228 followers. Yeah. And so, we're at 99.9% .9 positive feedback. But we're listing probably five to $600 worth of items a day. So we're filling up fast but we're emptying that shelf in the back. You can't see that, but it's emptying that shelf in the back pretty quick. So we can start moving stuff up off the floors. We've kind of slowed down on sourcing, but we should be able to pick back up again at the rate we're going. We should be able to go sourcing again. Next at week. The, yeah, next week we should be good to start buying stuff again so that we can fill this pile back up. This week we're helping children. Yep, this week we're... Laying flooring. Us two flooring. old broke people. Yeah, for the, for the young people, we're gonna go put in the flooring. We're, we're the only reason so we're doing bad. it is because we're pros at it. Fuck we are. Yeah, we are. Okay. Up next, we sold another piece of jewelry. We sold an Ann Taylor Loft crystal necklace. So it's there. Can you take it out or just put a picture? I'll have to put a picture up. There's really not much to that. Nope. It looks like... Little crystals. Yeah. Not much to it, but we've got a little bag and we'll ship that out. How much did that sell for? $19.99 free shipping. Yeah, so when you're buying a whole jar of jewelry for 40 to 60 bucks and individual pieces are selling for 15 to 20 for costume jewelry, it doesn't take long to get your money back. Well, I don't know where we're it at. takes long because they're long tail. They don't sell quick, but they do sell. I would say we're going to be profitable on that jewelry fairly soon. Yep. All right, what else you got? I sold a Schleich. I sold the princess and her horse. There she is. The Dumbass. Dude, that is Bayala Princess Isla on horseback. This one we almost bought twice. We found this one and we found comps mm. on her. And we were like, oh man, that's cool. And it's a Schleich and it sells at a decent price because she sold for how much? She sold for $49.95 full asking price. Yeah, and that's not common for a Schleich to sell at that, at that amount. I mean, that's a good one right there. And we saw a second one of these in a little... Thrift store. Church thrift store. But I saw it just as a kid came by, like a teenager came by it. and picked it up for her sister. So she ended up buying it, but that was that was a good one. Watch out for Schleich like that. And we did get quite a few questions off and on of people saying, hey, would you sell the horse by itself? Hey, would you sell the, the ferry by yourself? And yep. I just wanted to sell it as a whole. It's a whole thing. Yeah, so either piece of that actually would sell pretty good on its own, I think. All right, I think the second secret we can share with you guys is probably around the train sets and slot cars. Yep, we've picked up a lot of those lately. We have, and we see that we see other people picking these up and slot cars are big and trains are big. And I don't know if that, if those things are getting more common or less common, if that's trending up or down, I have no idea, but I do know they sell. I also know that if you pick up 10 train tracks, like full train sets in the box. They take up a lot of space. Well, one, the box takes up a massive amount of space. And two, there is always one broken piece. Very rarely, no matter how well or how new that thing is packed, there's always a tab on a track or something that is broken. And you could sell it whole, and we have. We sold 
the one of the first ones we got whole. Mm -hmm. And turned out there was a broken piece and it was a massive pain in the ass to ship. Mm -hmm. And when we did ship it, we got a complaint within the first few days that there was a broken tab somewhere or something like that. And we had to refund a bunch of the money or part of the money to keep them happy so we didn't have to pay for a return back. So secret tip number two, slot cars and train tracks. Take them out of the box and also don't necessarily sell them as a whole. Part them out. Parting them out. We picked up some Polar Express train and three of the pieces sold already and we've already tripled our money. Yep, part them out. Sell the tracks. If you've got six pieces of curve track, sell them as a lot for six pieces of curve track. Yep. Sell the straight track separate, sell the power supply separate. Every piece of it, you could kind of, you could bundle them up in small lots, but part them out. Yep. And we're making way more money. We paid for that. The whole train track for the Polar Express one would have sold for like 150. We made close to 200 on three pieces that sold so far. Yep. And we've got a dozen pieces left. Yeah, we haven't even sold any of the train cars The train cars yet. yet. Yeah, so part them out. You don't have to deal with the big shipping. Shipping is light and easy on the small pieces. Storage. Storage is way less. You don't have to deal with complaints of, hey, there was this one broken piece you didn't see in a box of 100 parts. Yep. So those ones... It was pretty good. Those have been, yeah, those have been good to us parted out. They have not been good to us as whole. And I'm sure there's other things like that. Okay. All right, what do you got next? I sold. You did? Yep. A Monster High 13 Wishes Gigi doll. All right, that's that one. She has the wrong arm. She I looks think. like she's all there. Oh, I had to straighten her out. It looked like one arm was longer than the other, but she's good. I remember why I sold her for so cheap. She got a haircut. Oh, did she? Yeah, look right here. She got a haircut. Oh, she's, she's got a bit of a new age look to her here. <laughs> yeah. Is that the play way to say that? Yeah. She. I think she was one of my 25 cent ones. Out of um, a like lot thing that I got, I picked up four of them for twenty five cents. How much did she sell for? Seven dollars and ninety nine cents. All right, so somebody probably bought her for parts, but you never know. Okay, so the next lady, she purchased two things from us. Um, she purchased two of my Smoky Bear things, Smoky Bear figurines. Oh, I shouldn't have brought this, huh? No, they're right there. All right, so it's these two things. So we got a Lefton Smoky the Bear. Yep, that's this one. Yep, that's the Smoky the Bear and Cubs backpacking. You have to put a picture up. And that one sold for how much? $34. And the other one is Smokey the Bear in Jeep Music Box plays Take Me Home Country Road. Oh, I just realized what's on the box is not what's no. in the box. <laughs> okay, I'll put a picture up. I'm not smart. So they're both the same picture on the box. Yep. That one sold for how much? $69. The lady messaged and said she was replacing them for somebody who lost them during a move. Okay, so up next was something that was in a box with a whole bunch of stuff. We sold some of the snap circuit pieces. Okay, so this little bag of goodies. This is just like a little electrical play set uh, called snap circuits. Oh, fuck off, Siri. Wait, anybody else's watch just talk shit all the time? Okay, snap circuits. And this was just a miscellaneous collection. It was in what? So remember my vector Ankai little mini robot? The little oh, tra truck yeah. thing that I sold? Yep. Yeah, so that was a good one too. That was 190 bucks. But those were in with that, along with some little tracks for some other things. So it's like, a, it's like an electrical play set for kids. They snap them together to build different circuits. And, and I paid $4.50 for the entire bag with the Ankai, A-N-K-I robot, which like I said, he sold for 190 bucks. Yep. And those sold for 12. So I made my money back lots and lots. Yep. So 12 bucks in that little bag and there's there's zero in it. I think we actually bought this this actual real box we set. We have two of them. I think we got two of them. And this is just a few pieces out of it that sold for 12 bucks. So we should yep. do okay with the sets. Yep. Let's do one more. What else you got? Um. So we sold, we went to a, an estate sale for an old lady. That was bad. Um, but we sold a custom made jean jacket. Yeah. This one here. You'll have to put a picture up of the whole thing. Actually, can I take that out of there? No. I want to take it out. No. Okay, this is, it's kind of a cool jean jacket. It's, it looks homemade. I believe it is. It is homemade. But they made it out of all different kinds of brands of jeans and they left the patches, like the brand patches on mm -hmm. the jeans. So we've got everything from like Rustler. Guess. To Guess to 
I mean, Levi's, Let me you see name if it. I pull up the pictures if I can see the rest of them. It's got some of the buttons from different brands on it. And it's it's really cool patchwork denim jacket. And we paid five bucks for two different denim jackets at that sale. Yep. And this one sold for how much? 95 bucks. 95 bucks. So I was worried because somebody said to go sell it on Depop. Depop. We probably would have got more on it on Depop, but by the time you set up the account and goofed around and learned a new platform, I'm yeah. fine losing the 15 bucks and just sell it on eBay. Yep. So I was pretty excited. I was worried it wouldn't sell. Because it's freaking is, ugly. Yeah, this is a perfect example of our next secret, and that is strange and ugly sells. If you're looking for stuff you don't see, if you see it and you're like, oh, that's different, a lot of times that's the stuff we we like. We like the different and the strange and the stuff you don't see every day. As you do this more, you kind of get a, you, you start kind of developing an eye for what is unique. Yeah. It's hard if, you, if you've never resold and you just start doing this, everything looks unique. Because you of, haven't seen it before. That, it's stuff that you've probably seen, but never thought of. Probably, it's more, it's, it's more pop. Like if I go see something Garfield or Scooby-Doo, I'm like, ooh, Garfield, Scooby-Doo, that's cool because it was my childhood and it's nostalgic, but it's not unique. They developed a million of them. Yep. They're everywhere. But when you see something like this, when you've, when you've done it for a little while, and we've done it literally just a little while, a year. Almost a almost year. Almost a year now. You start to develop kind of an eye for, for things that you haven't seen. It's the strains that makes mm -hmm. you stop and go, what is that? Or, you know, mm -hmm. those are the ones that have done best for us. Like, what is that? Strange and unusual. <laughs> she's been she's been doing it all along. I didn't even know it. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go get my my glasses. Fuck you glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was funny. Yeah. So look for the weird, like the unique. That's the same thing with like those. You know, I don't do a whole lot of glass anymore. I try and stay away from glass because Corey harped it into me that we don't ever want to ship it. But I've seen a lot of I people... I don't mind shipping glass. I've seen a lot of people picking up those, like, vases that have the little shoots off the top. I would chip those all day. Well, I know if we found them, but I haven't found one in the wild. Yeah, but those are unique, too, that, you know, I wouldn't know what it was. I don't mind shipping glass. What I have a, a tendency to stay away from, and I, and I often, when she's looking at it, I'll say, no, no. <laughs> That is, it's a category I call old lady glass. And I don't know of a better way to say it. It's the same old lady glass you see on every shelf on every grandma's house from the 70s and 80s. It's the same stuff. It's, they, they literally mass produced millions of pieces of the same crap glass. Yeah, I've, I haven't picked up a whole lot lately. Now, if I saw something that was glass, that was just a standout, it was original, I hadn't seen it before, it, it wasn't like other things, I would pick it up. So you're saying like my chicken I picked up? My brown chicken? Nesting chicken? It's not. No. I know it's not unique, but it's That is cute. totally the, exactly the definition of something that was mass produced. Okay. She just likes chickens, so we picked it up. And it was something that was nostalgic for us, which is oftentimes the things that are mass produced are the yep. ones that are nostalgic. Yep. I'm, I'm trying to think of a... The little crystal paperweight with the jellyfish in it. Oh, yeah, that was cool. You know, that's something that was... I know those are produced on a big scale, but it was unique and different. It, was a, it wasn't a one-off, but it's not something we see every day. Mm. As much glass as we see, we don't see that every day. And it sold quick. Mm -hmm. So My Murano glass, too, that one that had, like, the little flowers in it, that, yep. that was unique, too. And I, it just, not only did I grab it because it said Murano, but... So once you've been to a few hundred garage sales and thrift stores, you start to really notice unique stuff you see the blue glass and the amber glass and the red glass the ruby glass or whatever it is and they all Same. there's a kerbillion pieces of it <laughs> what's a kerbillion it's like one after a burbillion what's a burbillion it's like eight <laughs> <laughs> so that's the kind of glass in about five years unfortunately that'll start showing up at smash rooms where you go in and just beat the crap out of stuff because it's cheap and throw away i mean that mass produced stuff i just stay don't, away from it i stay away from it because it's everywhere if i wanted a piece of that mass produced stuff i just have to go to the local thrift store it's there mm -hmm. what's another good example movies 
like the the BBC documentaries yeah. and and stuff like that. Those we, are the ones that we do better on. We do. We have a bunch of documentaries sitting there too that we got to go through. But with movies, it's the the same. The I think it applies ones. across the board. Buy the weird stuff. Batman and Spider Man are so well produced or so mm-hmm. overproduced that so well produced. Some of them were not produced well. Anyway, they were produced so many of them that they're Mass just not production. worth that much money so grab the ones that are the the off the wall ones you don't see every day if you don't recognize it it's worth looking up that's kind of general rule of thumb yep and if you can't find it and that's just a great overall tip for reselling in general from two people who have no business giving tips on reselling (laughs) so speaking of that what do we have what did we actually resell next so we sold a couple of schleich figures we sold two horses one is a black and white pinto foal and one is a Hanoverian foal. It's these guys here. I guess those are two horses' ass. They're two. They're two separate sales, but they were right next to each other in the same bin. So. All right. So that's those two little guys there. Mm. I don't know if that camera's going to focus. Well, there we go. Those the, two guys there. The black and white Pinto foal. He sold for five dollars and ninety-nine cents. Okay. And he was part. Those were all part of that big horse lot that I bought. I think. At the bag, the $8 in, a, at the bag. in the Goodwill. Yep. Okay. And, and then the, I don't even know if I say that right, Hanoverian full, he sold for $4.49. All right. Okay. What else you got for me? We sold a motorcycle. Ooh. We sold a die cast Harley Davidson Super Glide Sport motorcycle. Is that up there? Nope, it's over there. I took it down already. It's right by where those horses were. Okay, so it's that one. That's it right there. And that sold for how much? That sold for $9.49. All we right. paid up for those because we also bought a Harley jacket and some Harley shirts that I haven't listed yet, but... Is that, did we get that at the same place we got that helmet? Yep. Okay, so yeah, we bought a big was, lot of Harley stuff, and we did pay up, but... I think they char- ended up saying that it was $3 a piece, but they only charged us $2 a piece, so we still made money on it. We have two more up there that we need yeah, to sell. Yeah, overall to. on that lot, we're going to do really well. It's just we had to pay up to get the whole lot because we did buy a bunch of Harley stuff that day. Yep. I guess the next secret to talk about is watch what popular culture around you is doing because it does it does affect reselling in some big ways it affects it in ways that you can really capitalize on to make more money specifically some of the some of the things they're starting to reproduce have have made some big effects monster high dolls is a good one everybody's going crazy about monster high dolls yep and the good news oh go ahead sorry keep going and because of that, they've actually, I think reselling actually drove that part of popular culture is because they were so popular, they started reproducing them, which in turn is actually making the older ones worth, worth more. even more money. Because they got popular, they started reproducing them. And because they started reproducing them, the older ones are getting even more popular, yep. which is helping resellers all over when it comes to the Monster High Dolls. Now, I do think that's a wave, don't you? Yeah, I'm sure it'll go. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that'll fizzle out. And, and I think that's probably why they would call it a trend to begin with, because it is a, a trend right now. It's not a trend, it's a fad. I don't know what the difference is, but a fad means that it comes in and it goes away. A trend is just, I don't know. Whatever. I don't know what the difference is. I might have to Google that. You want to know about the next one that I just learned about? The next what? The next thing that the next fad that's coming back. What is it? Furbies. They have announced oh, yeah. that they are going to start reproducing Furbies, which is going to make the old Furbies to me even more because I'm sure they're Furby just made prices. better. Yeah, and they're already high, which again I think drove the market to make yep. them do it again. They're getting harder to find, and they're already high priced, and they're popular enough that I think they've now kicked it off. Uh, Mattel, Hasbro. Hasbro kicked it off and they're starting to reproduce them or getting ready to. They're getting ready to. I don't know. It was, I just saw it in the news. With the addition of an off switch, they said. Oh yes. Yes. There'll be an off switch. (laughs) So you don't have to listen to your Furby all the time when he's on. Yep. So that's another good example of, of something where the, I I guess the market. The market demanded it. Demanded that they start reproducing. Now there's a flip side of that. And that is where popular culture actually creates the market or re-energizes the market. And that's stuff like the the mario movie the mario movie came out and now everything mario is hot just going crazy the prices have gone through the roof the video games are worth more than they've been in a long time mario figures mario everything 
Mm -hmm. There's another example and of that too that you things. love. Yes. They're bringing out a Barbie movie. So that's going to bring back Barbie. And not the Barbies weren't popular anyway, because I, I mean, I own, I don't want to say hundreds, but I'm pretty sure I own hundreds of Barbies right now. Uh, by by own she means they're for research yes i don't own any i don't collect <laughs> i don't collect barbies i like to research i like to learn about barbies yeah we're not i we're don't not think either of us are collectors by nature neither of us really get into collecting i collect chickens yeah but you're not really emotionally attached to them no anyway. i'm not emotionally like you'd attached. sell them tomorrow if you wanted to yep and i have to try really hard um when we go to garage sales because i think for nostalgia I would buy more of the Coca-Cola stuff. Yeah, it's just not worth anything. It's not worth anything, but to me, it's sentimental. She has bought some Coke stuff, and we do have a few Coke things that I've picked up and kept for her, but, and it's because her dad was really into the Coke stuff. Yep. So that part of it, I mean, there is some sentimental attachment there, but it's not a collection. Nope. She doesn't collect them. She's nope. just got a few pieces. Yep. Barbie stuff, I think we've yet to actually see that market, but I, I would suspect that one's coming. So yeah. I may be wrong, but I think the different Barbie pieces and things that show up in that movie are definitely going to spur some some price increases and some higher reselling opportunities. Yep. I think it would be cool if they brought back the Barbies in like the 80s clothes with like the leggings, they might. leg warmers and the... We'll have to see what happens there. So keep your eyes on Barbies and Furbies and Monster High and Keep your eyes on popular culture in general. Watch what the trends are because if they're going to release a new movie and they haven't produced anything with it for a while, there's a good chance those toys and stuff are going to start selling pretty well. We're going to go ahead and grab the last of our stuff so that we can get packed up. And okay. What do we got? So up next, speaking of golf clubs from earlier, we sold the five, six, and seven right-handed tailor-made golf club. Five, six, and seven. That's in there. All right, so that's out of a kid's golf set that we bought. We're already in a profit on that because I sold the bag. That's kids? That's kids clubs, yep. That doesn't, it didn't say junior on here. They are kids clubs. Okay. And then those ones sold for how much? $99.99. Yep, and they will go flat rate, $9.99 shipping. Ooh, we're gonna eat it on those. It's a little heavier, but. I suppose for a set of clubs, you should, you should probably, probably crease that a little bit. That's not a bad. We're still going to do just fine on them because we've got like three, four bucks in them. Three bucks a piece in them. So 10 bucks. Maybe. $15 shipping. We'll do fine. Speaking like of that. nostalgia and Mario Brothers, we sold the one and only Mario Brothers pin that we have. Yep. So we got a little hat pin there. You know, wasn't it Luigi that was in the yellow? I think that's Luigi. I don't know why I just put Super Mario. I didn't put who it was. How much did that sell for? $17 free shipping. Yeah, there's, that has no business selling for that amount of money. No, it's a pin. Like, for, like none. It's from, the, it's from 1988 Nintendo of America collector enamel pin. Cool deal. That one sold, and that's definitely because that Mario movie, because there's no way that should have sold for that amount of money. I don't think we have much in it, because it was in with no. a lot. It was in with a lot of stuff, a lot of jewelry pins that I bought. That was weird. <laughs> what did you do it three times for? <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I think I have like, I don't know. I think I paid three bucks for the whole thing of pins and I'm pretty sure there's like yeah. 15 pins in there. So do you just do it again. The whole thing. Of I pins. don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, beep, this beep, is beep, beep, beep. No. <laughs> okay. So that's the last thing I have for today. All right. Before we end it, we're going to throw in one more bonus tip. Well, I don't know about this one. What's the bonus tip? The bonus tip is for those of you who need an alternative to the whatnot. Whatnot, a lot of people are flocking to whatnot as resellers, mostly because of one reason, one reason only, which is what? To get rid of junk. To get rid of junk. They've bought bad buys. Everybody buys bad buys. Doesn't matter how good of a reseller you are or how long you've been doing it, everybody has bad buys. Is it a garage sale? And whatnot is where a lot of those bad buys are ending up lately so yes you can have a garage sale we've done really well getting rid of stuff on garage sales like that but there is another way to get rid of bad buys stuff that would not normally sell on its own and it's not really a secret in the e-commerce community it's been being done forever so i'm going to share it with the reseller ebay reseller community and that is bundles oh <laughs> i'll show you what are you bundling 
say for example I bought this women's Cincinnati Bengals jersey koozie for beer bottles thinking that was going to be a good buy and I'd be able to sell it and then I come home and I find out that's not worth listing this is the kind of thing that ends up on whatnot sure now rather than do that I could take all my other bad buys that fit a similar theme I have Bengal Cincinnati coasters I have the men's jersey I have the bottle opener and I have a little bucket. Bengals bucket so just throw and it these all, all individually are horrible no good dirty bad buys that would end up on whatnot for some poor soul to overpay for I'm pretty sure that poor soul that sold that to you begged you to take it they did they <laughs> asked me if I would take it <laughs> and now because I have a bundle I could probably sell this. What would you list this at, you think? The Bengals game night bundle. $14.99. There you go. And I don't have to have a whatnot to do it. So bundling will keep you off whatnot. And kids, just say no to whatnot. You don't want to end up on the streets. Say no to whatnot. Dare to say no to whatnot. Stop. This is your brain. You need your brain on one day. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, before he goes any farther with any additional whatnot jokes. No, if you're doing whatnot, good for you guys. You're finding a way to get rid of stuff, and that's that's what we're all in it for. But this is this is a good alternative. Making bundles is something that you should consider, whether it's to get rid of stuff or not, or if you just want to raise that average sale price up, and you don't want to sell five dollar items, but yep. you want to get your store to fifteen, twenty dollar and above. Yep. Bundling Bundle. things up in common themes is actually something that works really well. We've done it. We still do it. We do it with movies all the time. We do it with movies. I did it with yep. a bunch of Fortnite figures. Don't discount something just because it's not worth a lot. Just find other things that you can bundle it with to make it worth messing around with. So that's our bonus tip of the day. And we're going to get these packed to get them to the post office. So we'll see you guys next time. Hasta la vista, baby.